Good morning, folks. I trust you're well as we start another day. I hope we're going to be encouraged by what we have to read today and to, to think upon. And uh, our week is already progressing. I hope we've got plenty to, to do today to keep ourselves both occupied, uh, both mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, and that we'll work hard at whatever it is we turn our hands to do. That's the admonition, admission from the mission. Admo admonition, you get the right word, from the Apostle Paul in our reading today as we look at our Bible reading uh, challenge from 1 Timothy chapter 4. Should we get straight into that? Paul starts with a, another topic first of all, we'll cover that in a bit, but we're looking for the start of this chapter. The Spirit says clearly that some people will abandon the faith in latter times. They will obey lying spirits and follow the teachings of demons. Such teachings are spread by deceitful liars whose consciences are dead as if burnt with a hot iron. Such people teach that it is wrong to marry and to eat certain foods, but God created those foods to be eaten after a prayer of thanks by those who are believers and have come to know the truth. Everything that God has created is good. Nothing is to be rejected, but everything is to be received with a prayer of thanks because the word of God and the prayer make it acceptable to God. If you give these instructions to the believers, you will be a good servant of Christ Jesus as you feed yourself spiritually on the words of faith and of the true teaching which you have followed. But keep away from those godless legends which are not worth telling. Keep yourself in training for a godly life. Physical exercise has some value, but Spiritual exercise is valuable in every way because it promises life both for the present and for the future. This is a true saying to be completely accepted and believed. We struggle and work hard because we have placed our hope in the living God who is the saviour of all and especially of those who believe. Give them these instructions and these teachings. Do not let anyone look down on you because you are young, but be an example for the believers in your speech, your conduct, your love, faith and purity. Until I come, give your time and efforts to the public reading of the scriptures and to preaching and teaching. Do not neglect the spiritual gift that is in you, which was given to you when the prophets spoke and the elders laid their hands on you. Practice these things and devote yourself to them in order that your progress may be seen by all. Watch yourself and watch your teaching. Keep on doing these things, because if you do, you'll save both yourself and those who hear you. Amen. Plenty of admonition here to be working hard at, at anything we're, we're turning our hands to. And, and Paul obviously is putting some things in certain orders. He sees that uh, physical exercise is important. What we eat and drink is important. But when we devote ourselves to, to spiritual matters, these are even more important, not well, just for this life, but the life to come. We can learn so much even in this life about God himself and uh, what he requires of us. So there's, there's much to be said about that. And we can see the, the very personal tenor of this letter to Timothy uh, as we're reading that, as he instructs him to be a good leader, but also never to let anybody look down on his youth. You know, it's, it's quite easy. I, I've experienced it myself, particularly when I was younger, and I still experience it probably to this day, uh, folks looking at you and saying, you know, how are you doing, young man? How are you doing, young woman? Might be another one. Um, pe people naturally, when they're a little bit older, look on others as being younger than themselves and maybe, as a consequence, think that they're their elders and betters. And in some things, that might well be the case. But we all have our own specialities in life and sometimes we can know more than someone that's older than us. We're, we're going to touch on that again when we look at the next chapter tomorrow. Um, so I don't want to cut away at something that we'll be, be talking about tomorrow. But the most important thing for today really is, you know, if, if you have a skill, if you have a gift, if you have a teaching, if you have been taught, if you've been trained for a certain purpose, be that in ministry, be that as a, a manager, be that as a supervisor, be it whatever a role you have in life, be it as, you know, I don't know, pick, pick a, a topic, a mechanic, a trained mechanic, um, knows what they're doing, no matter how young they might be. If they do the job well, that's what matters, um, and, and so on and so forth. Youth doesn't mean necessarily you don't know anything. 
you could well know something uh, very great indeed. It's been commented that the doctor, a good sign of you being old is that, or older, is that the doctors all seem quite young, or the policemen seem quite young. And maybe there's something to that. They do seem to be younger and younger. Because these are professions where people perhaps train at an early age, having left school, to get into these occupations and, and professions. And so naturally, if they've just uh, graduated or they spent even just only a few years in their profession, they might be quite uh, proficient at what they're doing. But you could find yourself being significantly older than someone who has received a, some level of proficiency, but, but seems quite a bit younger than yourself. Paul here suggests, don't let anybody look down on you like that. Get on with what you've got to do. Do it well. Work hard and uh, receive the blessings that you should get from that. Some, some good admonition for all of us, no doubt. I also want to just pick up very briefly and only briefly on the opening comments of this chapter where Paul suggests that the Spirit says that in, in latter times some will abandon the faith. And that is quite a concern. He, put, he puts the, the fault of that uh, right at the root of the tree of, of basically following all sorts of different ideas, um, different uh, fables uh, and, and different stories, and, and people putting faith and trust in them, rather than sticking to the necessities of what the faith is actually about. Ultimately, for Paul, the faith is about Christ. Christ, Christ, Christ. And through faith in him, we, we get to have open access to, to God in prayer. And, and that, that really is the, the, the nub of his message. When we start to adorn it with all sorts of other things, we can potentially get further and further away from that. And I mentioned just um, fairly recently that you know, one of the reasons I've looked at some of the, the earlier teachings of, of the faith, things like the Apostles' Creed, uh, things like the Westminster Confession of Faith, thinking about the, the Church of Scotland as a denomination and, and things like this. The reason I look at these kind of things is you've got some basic statements of beliefs there that have, have held pretty true for a long, long time, with, with very little variation, particularly with things like the Apostles' Creed. Um, so we have some basic beliefs, but you know, we, we, can, we can go off telling all sorts of stories and giving morals to, to lessons, um, and, and it makes good hearing, perhaps, and sometimes makes a point, but, but the real danger is that we, we go off and we become more about the stories, more about the moral lessons, and, and more about being able to tell a good yarn than actually get to the point which is about Christ and being able to glorify God in all these things. It seems there were some, even in Paul's time, who had learned the faith and maybe even might have uh, been leading congregations. Certainly they were, they were proficient enough to be leading lights within congregations at least and who had really abandoned the faith, had gone on the wrong road entirely. They'd been misdirected, if you like, or distracted down a wrong road. May that never be the case for us. Let's keep on confirming what it is we believe, keep on confirming that uh, we're, we're doing what God requires of us. And that is the admonition of Paul also today as well. That is really a, a number of lessons that we have for, yes, our spiritual life, but if, if indeed you can separate these things, our life in general. Um, how do we keep ourselves on the straight and narrow? How do we keep ourselves occupied? How do we work hard keeping Christ in uh, preeminence in our thoughts, in whatever it is we fill our time with? I hope that's helpful this day as we, we think on that. Let's have a wee word of prayer and uh, continue on with whatever it is we have to turn our hands to. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have given us so much. You've given us food and drink. You've given us people to come into contact with. You've given us life itself. You've given us uh, religious communities that we can belong to and, and struggle within even, be supported in and sometimes distracted by. We pray that in all these things that Christ would be the foremost treasure in everything we think upon. Help us to, to also not neglect the, the, those other aspects of life that are important, like our exercise and our eating and our, our, our occupation. But also, Lord, help us to always remember that, that the spiritual life is one that puts us in good stead for this life and the life to come. But our eternal life with you is one that we should be cultivating every single day. And we do that quite simply by hard work. By, by looking to you in all that we do and, and never 
uh, taking a, a lazy approach to any aspect of our lives. Help us never to look down upon those younger than ourselves. Help those who are younger to appreciate that they are cherished and have a valuable role in our society and, and in our lives. And help us, Lord, that we would be encouraged by one another and never put down, but rather would be blessed by association with one another and uh, particularly by association with Christ. Help us in all these things, Lord, and forgive us where we fail you. We ask these in Jesus' name. Amen. Hope you have a good day and indeed a good week. Until the next time, as we look at the next chapter tomorrow, God bless, take care, and bye for now.